Today we're talking about showing sympathy to children without creating emotional entitlement. I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, and how to build strong family relationships through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're going to be really working on our sympathy. <laughs> I'm going to share a story from my real life and then I have a lot of tips for you that can help make sure that you are giving that sympathy when needed but not fostering emotional entitlement. So what is emotional entitlement? That's super important for us to understand. The simple definition of emotional entitlement is that a person starts feeling a certain way and then they start emoting that feeling and they feel like they deserve it. They deserve to treat other people that way. There was an article I read years ago by a Harvard professor and she was talking about how she felt like it was emotionally healthy to emotionally vomit on other people. She said, you know, when you feel sick inside, you have to throw up. When you feel something inside, you have to throw it up. And I was like, that is the most false bit of information I've ever heard in my life. Because if I threw up every thought I had about everybody all the time, I would be number one, super negative because I have to keep pushing those thoughts off and say, no, that's not the right way to think. But I would also be damaging relationships like crazy. So sure, maybe you need to express yourself in some way, but to throw up your emotion all the time, what about the person who got vomited on? What about them? Do they have any rights or do they have to just take it all the time? And if they don't have to take it all the time and they also have the right to emotionally vomit on you, then doesn't that just mean that we're saying in order to solve our problems, we have to just let loose on each other and do anything to each other that we want to and not respect other humans? I just think that's wrong. So, you know, all due respect to whoever wrote that article, because I can't even remember her name, but I thought that is wrong. It's false information. And I know from personal experience. So I have a strong will which is actually why I love the concept of self-government, which is what this whole channel is about, is self-government. But I have a strong will in a way that I used to get into power struggles a lot. With my mom especially, but often sometimes even with my dad. My dad has a very strong will too. In fact, both of my parents are strong-willed, but my dad, is he'll fight with you. He's the type that will say, I'm the boss, so you'll listen to me. And he's, he's softened a lot, just so you know, over time. But that's how he was when I was young. I would say, why can't I do that? And he'd say, because I'm the boss, that's why. And I'd say, well, that means nothing, because you can't make me blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, I was like that. Really disrespectful child um, for a time until I figured that out. So I had these battles with my parents and I'm pretty sure I, I gave them all their gray hairs. And then I learned a beautiful skill. Okay, so I was emotionally vomiting on them all the time, wanting understanding. Does emotional vomit produce understanding from other people? Not as much. They may say, she's mad or she didn't like that or something like that, but that does not necessarily mean that they care, not when they feel like they've just been mistreated or disrespected, which is what I was doing. So in the end, we had contention all of the time. And so what happened was my parents stopped letting me do anything. So I started asking, oh, can I go to the mall with my friends or can I have people over for this? Nope, nope, nope. The answer was always no, because I had completely removed any trust in that relationship because I was not respecting them. And so they didn't feel they could, if I couldn't, if they couldn't trust me to just say okay to, to taking my dishes over or to doing my dishes, then how could they trust me with anything else? There was a moment when a neighbor of mine said, hey, Nicolene, have you ever thought of just saying okay to your parents? It might solve all your problems. I didn't believe her. I said I would challenge her and that it wasn't true. So I used my strong will to prove. I said, I'll go home and I'll do it. And I bet you they won't change anything about me. And she said, okay. She promised me she wouldn't talk to my parents and that I would go home and do conduct an honest study and so I did and guess what it worked it literally worked she was right I just started to say okay and be okay and not have problems and I started getting whatever I wanted and my relationships were healed with my parents it was actually really beautiful I hadn't thought of it before I hadn't thought do what they say and then get what you want that doesn't make sense to a strong-willed person but that is what happened. It changed everything. But I got to tell you something. There was this time when I moved in with my parents. Uh, we, I was married and I had a child at the time too, but we were building a new house. We sold our other house and we had this little bit of time where we had to live with my parents. 
So I wasn't in the habit of being the daughter, right? I mean, I was their daughter, but it was different once you're married. So anyway, I wasn't in that habit of just doing whatever they say anymore. And it was, there were some things that were starting to get kind of annoying when you're living together. Well, one time my mother accused me of something that did not happen. And I was so frustrated by it that I just started yelling at her. And when I was yelling at her, it felt so good, like throwing up all the sickness. But in the end, she shut completely down. Well, she yelled at me first for a second. She shut completely down. We couldn't talk to each other for days. It was horrible. I was too proud to say I was sorry at first. It was horrible. It didn't help anything. It ruined the relationship. So that's emotional entitlement. What happened was I had emotional entitlement. It ruined my relationships. I stopped being emotionally entitled and started using skills like being okay and saying okay when my parents told me to do something or not to do something. And it changed everything. And then that one moment of emotional entitlement and, ju and jumping down my mother's throat and yelling at her actually ended up ruining some of my freedom again. And did I want her to understand me? Did I want justice? Yes, all of those things, but I didn't get really any of them. All I got was a power struggle and a really bad feeling inside. So how do we help our children? How do we show sympathy to our children and not lead them to a place where they will think that they have to unload and vomit everything on everybody else all the time? That's what we really need to talk about. So we're going to talk about what to do to show sympathy to your children because that's super important without creating that emotional entitlement. But before we do, click that subscribe button so you don't miss all of the other videos on this channel that are going to help you fine tune your self-government. So let's talk about the process of showing sympathy. So number one, you want to always make sure that you do feel open to the child, which means you're not getting emotionally invested in all of their uh, feelings that they might be having. So be that safe place, that person they can always talk to. And I would make sure that you let them know ahead of time that you're happy to always discuss with them because that's going to help them come to you when there's something that needs to be talked about. Let them know about their feelings. Well, this is what sadness feels like. This is what overwhelm feels like. This is what stress feels like. Whenever you feel these things, come talk to me. I'll help you through it. That's what a good parent does. So then the child comes and says, hey mom, I'm feeling really overwhelmed because I've got this and I've got this and I don't know how to solve my problem. And so then the parent can say, oh, you know what? I've felt that before. That's actually a really hard feeling, but there is a way that you can manage it. So you're going to validate, yep, people feel that way sometimes, but let's help you come up with some good thoughts and ways to handle it. So one thought that a parent might tell a child, and this is a really old school thing to say, but you eat an elephant how? One bite at a time. So if a person is overwhelmed, you might say, well, just so you know, if I was going to eat an elephant, I could only eat it one bite at a time. So we don't have to worry about all the things that have to happen. We only have to worry about taking one bite out of this problem. So what bite should we start with? right? So maybe it's clean the bedroom and the bedroom's got stuff everywhere. So what's the one bite? Maybe the one bite is, how about we start with just making the bed? Then the second bite, it's like hard to say bite might. Okay. Then the second bite might be, well, how about now we put away all the shoes? Then put away all the blocks put away all the books, put away all the cars, all the different things that might be in a child's bedroom. You take it one bite at a time. When you do this, you're teaching them how to solve their problem for the future. When something's overwhelming, they can take one bite at a time, right? So they come to you with their feeling, and instead of emoting on it and, and melting down and having a problem, then you say, yes, that's a true feeling that people can feel sometimes. Here's how to handle it. Let me help you. And you work them through the situation. It's super empowering for your children. One thing I want to caution you against is feeding feelings to your children because this can actually create a worse problem than what currently exists. So if you have a child who um, you think could be experiencing something, maybe someone said, no, you can't play with me. You know, and if, if you go up to the child and say, oh, do you feel left out? Do you feel like nobody likes you? Oh, that is not a good thing to say. You say something like that to your child, and they're like, 
Should I? Is that what most people feel? Do they not like me? They might not have even thought of that at all. They might have been a little sad, but then they're going to move on. But if you feed them some of those extra feelings and those feeling phrases and feeling words, the problem might actually become worse. So be very careful about that as you're showing sympathy to your children. Because sometimes we see things happen and we process them from a teenage point of view. And I'm not saying we're teenagers, but once we hit that teenage, like about age 18, we keep processing things from how we thought about stuff at age 18. And so we see from a more mature uh, perspective, we see from experience what somebody might be thinking when they do that to our child. And then we might feel compassion, want to show sympathy, and then lead them in a direction that can actually create less resiliency and more sadness. So if you want your child to learn resiliency, then say, hey, I just noticed this, this certain thing happened. Just describe what happened and then say, you know, how are you doing? How do you feel about that? Well, I feel kind of sad, but I'm okay. Well, that's good. You're really resilient. That's great. You're deciding that this is not a big deal for you and you're moving on. Good for you. You know, so those are things that um, you can say to your child instead of feeding them in the wrong direction. When you're showing sympathy to your children, give them a hug. Sometimes they need that personal connection, that release of oxytocin to know that everything's okay. Give him a hug, tell him you love him, tell him it's okay and that you understand. That's important, be understanding. Listen to what they have to say and really listen. Sometimes that alone can just solve the problem for a person. And the other thing you wanna make sure that you do is don't get too emotionally invested in what's going on with the child. So if you start to take it to an emotionally deeper place or start to get offended by what happened to your child, that's not gonna help them move forward. And what you wanna do is definitely keep them moving forward. Help them move toward calmness. Help them move toward connection and moving in a direction where they feel like everything's going to be okay instead of a direction where they feel like they're going to be a victim. So speaking of calmness, if you've enjoyed this video, I have a gift for you. In the description below this video, there is a link to my Calm Parenting Toolkit, which is a mini course that has 10 tools in it for calmness for you and to help your children be calm as well. So click on the link that says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit and you can have the Calm Parenting Toolkit for free for right now. So click on the link now. I'll see you there.